This video is made possible by CodeNotary.io, tamper-proof notarization for all your digital objects. Hello everybody and welcome back to the Moshix mainframe channel. This is Moshix. As many of you know, I've been fascinated the last uh, three four months with the network job entry protocol and the application uh, of this protocol to mainframes. And I've already released a couple of videos of all the things, interesting things we've done. Uh, the main idea is that we use uh, the network job entry to connect all the hobbyist mainframes uh, using VM370 and MVS. And those who have real mainframes, either because they have, like I do, an, an IBM P390E card, or because I have a ZBTC PDT mainframe, or real mainframe such as the University of Leipzig, we can all interconnect to each other. And the good thing about uh, working with network job entry when we want to share files and we want to uh, write applications for each other is that we never leave the mainframe format. We always stay in Epsidic um, uh, character set. We always stay within the endianness of the medium of the mainframe and we never have to worry about blocking and that kind of stuff and, and trying to fit character sets into ASCII because that's the native uh, network protocol for mainframes. And so there's, a, there's this IBM um, manual that I actually like that uh, outlines exactly how the network job entry protocol works. Uh, how it's formatted, how it works. And and you also know that I've had for a while uh, this uh, relay service in the int, uh, in things like uh, relay weather, uh, let's say forecast, oh, let me make this a little bit smaller, um, relay forecast Paris, and then we will get uh, the weather forecast for that city. It will tell us here the Celsius, or we can do relay moon, and will give me the moon face. Um, I think we're just about halfway through in the current cycle. Yeah, so it'll tell us the moon and where we are. Actually, more than halfway through, and um, and so anybody who is either on VM three seventy or um, ZVM and even ZOS can interconnect very easily with us. We have about, as I've said, uh, maybe about 40 hosts. Um, let me show this here. If you go to moshix.dynu.net, you will see a bunch of the topology of the network as it is today. But already this is a little bit um, outdated. There's maybe three or four hosts more. The University of Leipzig in Germany is connected and um, some other my mainframes are missing here. However, today the video is about how can you connect to all of this goodness here. We also have, by the way, um, a chat server. We have a, um, a conferencing um, service so that people can have uh, forums and discussions. And, uh, and, and how can you connect to all this if you don't want to start the VM370, if you don't want to run your own mainframe, and if you don't have um, if you don't have a ZVM or if you don't have anything that makes it easy to connect, well, there's an answer to that too. And the and the answer is in the fact that um, network job entry is just a protocol, and anything that can um, can follow the guidelines of the protocol can connect to any other host. And so in this video, we show how to use your Linux machine to connect to. Uh, HNet and start to participate. And so in this video, one thing we're going to do is show how easy it is to uh, set up and configure NGE on your Linux machine. And then the second thing is we're going to start to um, maybe automate some tasks, how to get the relay services that I've showed before on your Linux machine. We have a program running called FUNet NGE. And this one is completely free and I will link in the description below this video where you can obtain the package uh, from my uh, GitHub. Well, I can actually do it here. If you do uh, GitHub Moshix, you should be able to get to my repositories. And here somewhere I have a repository with the source code, um, this one. Linux NGE. This compiles cleanly on on uh, on Linux, and and so we go. But I also have a 
version of this which is already uh, compiled and packaged or you only have to untar it on your Linux machine and then just do uh, three or four configuration tasks to connect to my um, machines, to my mainframes or to anybody else you want to connect to. So, uh, so I'm going to put the link to this repository as well as a link to where you can download the ready-made, um, already compiled version of this. Once you have this um, on your machine, then you untar it. And when you untar it, um, several things happen. You're going to have a file uh, called funetnge.cf. And then also there will be a, a directory called var local uh, user local. Uh, yeah, this directory will be created. And this directory is important because you have um, the binary itself of the program as well as some important binaries that um, make this all work. One very important set of files is the header file. Um, here, for instance, I have this header file dot route dot header just shows the name of who I am. And so just say route. This machine is called Relay B local and it's an ASCII machine. And then we have the routing table and we can just copy this all more the routing table. Uh, oh, that's, that's actually not it more route routes. And you see that these are all the machines that I can reach from here and that machines that want to reach me. And so I add them here and I say route which which mainframe and through which host do I connect. So here I have to connect through Moshix 4, which is one of my main um, nodes in the, in HNet. And so Moshix 4 knows how to get to Moshix 3. And so I say route Moshix 3 through Moshix 4. And then this is just fixed format. So if you use this kind of routing table, you will be able to set up how to reach those machines. And if they write, if they send commands or files to you, they will be able to get responses then back to you, to them if you have the routing table configured. That's one thing that you find in this directory. Again, the directory is user local f unit and ge. Um, then you have also um, you have a program called NGE routes, and this the way this works is you execute with ng routes and then it will ask you for a header file so you give the header file that we have to configure with the name of your node and the and then it will ask for the route file and then it will create a binary uh, database called um, uh, where is it funet ng route so this this is a binary file if I try to do to list it, it will just show as it as a as a binary file, um, and so this is the route that Fnet NGE will search each time it needs to contact any other host. Then there's another important file in here. Exit um, original. So this is just a file that shows for any incoming type of command what to do. And we've seen some other videos I've, I've made how to respond. And here's this is just an exit file. So you can uh, add your own commands here and how to respond to those commands. There are several um, built in hard coded commands. And then there's some where you can just put in whatever want, you want to happen. And very often for my own file, what I do here, I have, uh, I can show you this. What I have is, for instance, for let's say pi, um, I run a pi bash command. And so every time that a command comes in pi, this command will be executed and the output will be sent to the node that asked for this command to be executed. So, um, so these are the very important um, com files in this directory. Well, if you have this properly configured, any command that I can send to relay from a real mainframe, I can also send from Linux. So that's why I thought for all the people who would like to be participating in HNet, but don't have a mainframe or don't want to deal with the complexity of setting them up mainframe, because it's not that easy. This It's a 10, 12 step process that actually somebody in the community outlined very well. 
from Linux, then you can just follow what we do here. Okay, so let's go There should be a directory here. Yeah. So once you go to the to the link below this video, you will be able to download this downloadables here. Um, especially the this one. This is the one you want. Funet ng Linux 32-bit bin. And unfortunately, um, this only works in 32-bit right now. I have it experimentally working in 64-bit, uh, which is the. But then you would have to compile it yourself. That's the, that's the GitHub repository I showed you earlier. Um, so this is what you need to obtain, and you take this file, and then you need to copy it to the root directory. And as you can see here, that's what I have here. I have it in the root directory, and then you untar it okay you would do this i'm not going to do it because i'm just going to destroy everything that i installed but if you do that it will put everything directly in the right place you don't have to worry about that anymore it will put all the directors i've mentioned so far will all be there for you to um, to then just go and configure so once we've done that now we need to do several things first of all we need to um, make sure that we install the 32-bit execution environment if you install the binary the pre-compiled binary that uh, is linked to in the description below this video then you need to install a 32-bit execution environment for linux because uh, this is only compiled 32-bit and as i said i have a 64-bit compatible version in my github but if you don't want to compile that, if you want to make it easy, then just follow these steps. I have here, uh, I have here the steps of things that you need to install for your Ubuntu or Debian, which is the package add architecture E386, because by default nowadays most architectures are 64-bit. Uh, but so you add this I386, which is the 32-bit execution environment. Then you do an apt update so that um, it goes and gets those repositories. And then you install this, um, these libraries. And I'm going to link, I'm going to describe this also in the description below this video. I'm going to put exactly these three lines. So you can just copy and paste. And if you install that, now you're ready to go. The next step will be to configure who you want to connect with. Now, of course, you need to find somebody who wants to peer with you. Uh, if somebody is really serious about peering with me and has a fixed IP and uh, has a, a machine that is always up 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 12 months a year, because I don't want to have people with laptops and then they start it once in a while and then they never continue. But if you're really serious about connecting to HNet and you have a machine somewhere, lit, for instance, in the cloud that is always up, and you've gone through the steps, then I'll be happy to peer with you and you can join our amazing HNet community and use all the HNet services out there. So then the next step will be to configure the configuration file for your connections. And so that resides in slash etc slash funet.cf as you just saw. And here it's simple, you put in you know your name whatever that name is of your connection you must decide on a unique name throughout all of hnet it is somewhat um of a of a tradition to put in at the beginning the the country code so if you're in ireland people put in ir if you're in germany people put in d if you are in israel people will put in an is if you are in russia or soviet union back then <laughs> people put in su even though Soviet Union was not connected to Bitnet, but Russia, for instance, and then a description of who you are, I don't know, D Dimitri, and then VM1. Uh, you can have at most eight characters, but um, I, I suggest you only use seven for several reasons I don't want to get into, so seven will be best. So here, in this case, I would go like this. Our U for Russia, if you're in Russia, 
DM for your maybe initials VM if you're using VM. Uh, but since um, you, you're not using VM in this case, maybe if let's say your name is, I don't know, Dimitri and you're in Russia, you'll do Dimitri Linux 1 maybe. And so if you have several of your nodes, then you can start numbering them 1, 2, 3, 4. And people know that everything that is are used from Russia, DM is, is your stuff and Linux is Linux. If you have VM means ZVM. If you have ZOS, maybe you put in the Z, stuff like that. Then your own IP address and um, and then the port on which you will be listening for connections. That's very important. This is 175, so you have to make sure your firewall will let uh, connections coming in on 175 through through this port. If you use a different port, that's fine. 175 is the internet standard for NGE. So it's kind of a lot of people will insist that you use 175. So you'd have to open this up on the firewall. Make sure that all traffic on 175 will reach you here. This is where the log is going to be, which is important. So you know if, because that's where we're going to check if things are happening. Then the routing table, it wants to know where this routing table. We look at this, uh, we looked at this at the beginning of this video, um, with how to build a routing table. And then this is less important. And then the default route, which is usually the route you're connecting to. So if you collect, connect to a guy called, to, to, to a lady at, uh, Uh, I don't know, let's say in Germany, and she's at, uh, um, I don't know, uh, ZGVM1, and that's your only connection that you will put that in, and then the name of the connection, so in this case, if this is the only connection, you would do something like this, GVM1, same as this one, and then um, the port on which this connection is listening to, so the other side. Again, um, most people, you would want them to listen to port 175 because that is the standard. Okay. And then their IP address. And this, in most cases, is either uh, 496 or 8192 so 4 kilobytes or 7 kilobytes and that's how you live it so once you have this set up you rarely have to change it unless you add new connections or drop connections so this file describes connections you have with other people or lines that's why it says here line and if you have another connection there you do line 1 and describe, I don't know, DZGVM2. Uh, okay, so this is really important to get this right. If this doesn't work, you will never get connected, ever. Right, so make sure you get this right and make sure you don't have any uh, lines you don't really need in here. So that's it. And um, before we start the NG connection to your routing node and it's some, I, I suspect in many cases that would be me. Now we need to also make sure that you have all the ra that your users that are working with NGE are all connected to the right NGE group on uh, on the Linux permissions. To do that, you have to understand that there is a, that you should add a group called um, as you see here. There should be a group called FUN, FUNET NGE, and this needs to be the exact group ID. It cannot be anything other than 2224. If you make any kind of changes to this, if this looks any different than this, it will never work. In, I cannot stress this enough. Make sure that the group is called FUNET NGE and it has a group ID of 2224. Thousands of websites that tell you how to add groups to Linux. I'm not going to go into it here now uh, This web this channel is not made for people who don't know how to add groups So I would just assume you know how to do it, but the main thing is that you have The group called FUNET NGE with a group net of the group ID of 2224 and if 
and then you want to have any user who's going to use this and be able to send messages and receive messages should be part of this group if that user is not part of this group nothing will work so I'll say it again you need to add a group with this group ID and if you go and look um, It's best to make all the files here of part of that group as well. So since the root is part of this group in this case, that works. But whoever works with, works with um, FUNET NGE needs to be in this group. Very, very, very important. If you don't make this, if you don't make this happen, nothing is going to work. So now that we have this uh, installation done, we configured relay.cf in slash etc. We uh, now need to add routes. And as I said before, the way I do this is that you need to have a route header. This is in the user local funetng directory. And here you just put in your um, particular node name that you've chosen for yourself as I said there's some guidelines the country comes first and the user and then the type of machine uh, you put this in here and you leave this other three fields alone they need to be like that route your node ID local ASCII don't change that and then you put in all the routes in the, in the file exactly in this order as you're seeing here on the video uh, if you don't put it like this it will never work once you've done it like this you created a file like this and again i call my file funetng.route.routes we invoke this command here okay this command ng routes to create the database so it's ng routes and we say uh, user low oh, I can just say f u net nge route header and then the routes route routes and and then you want to put it the output where the binary version of the route tree is going to go to and that's this file here okay pay very close attention please it's a few net ng.route and it will say that total records inserted 36 and one duplicate in duplicate tmp that's okay um, we can deal with that later but so created a routing table and that's how you create the binary routing table and now at this point once you've done that you're really ready to start your connection and you, you start the connection with simply invoking this command here okay now if you invoke this command you need to have a way also to shut it down and this command what it does is it creates a PID like a, a process ID in in the etc directory you see here this file here will have the process id of the current incarnation of funit ng so if you start just with funit ng uh, it will create this process id file and you need to find a way to kill it that's why i wrote a little simple script um, Yeah, I wrote a simple script that says value the cat of this pit file here and then kill that minus nine and then it says fnet ng killed. I will put this also in the description below this video so that you can play with this. But this is the way you start NGE on a Linux system. <laughs> it's very simple. You just invoke user local uh, fnet fnet ng. You start this and you kill it by just saying in my case 
uh, kill NGE because it takes it from the bin directory and this is there's a little script that kills that. Uh, that's really all there is to it in my machine. Uh, so once we're connected, we can start doing stuff. So send uh, Moshix at Moshix hello from YouTube. And this will be delivered now through all the hops that are in between. We don't really need to know how many hops. There could be two, there could be ten. Back in the BitNet days, it could take one minute, it could take five minutes, it could take a whole day for this message to deliver. But here we already have it. So, uh, hello from YouTube. And now if I want to answer back, I would say tell um, root, because we use a root, as you can see here. So, user tell root at relay b hello back from vm370 and so i send it this way and this will be delivered now to this user at this host and here it is already hello back from vm370 so conversely i can now create a VA, um, youtube test just a simple file hello again from YouTube and so now we say send file moshix at moshix YouTube and it goes now to this user here it is so uh, we could receive it now but let's say that we want to create now a new file uh, test 3 YouTube and we write in here hello from space oops I'm still in bin mode sorry uh, YouTube test 3 YouTube now we can say send file test 3 YouTube a to root at relay b and we already get a message here that we've been delivered a file and so we can do q reader and we'll see that we have test for youtube here delivered so if i do now receive spool id 90 which is this spool id i will have a test Yeah, it hadn't finished receiving yet, but I will, I will get this file. And the ASCII translation from Mepsidic is done completely. The last thing we can do is send commands. So how do we send commands? We do send minus C at um, relay moon. Oh, I forgot the D. If we do it this way, a uh, command is going to be sent to node relay and I want to have the moon face and as you can see here the moon face is being sent to me it's almost a full moon and that's exactly the same way that we work from here if I say here relay moon uh, the command is going to be sent to the relay command processor and uh, the answer is going to come back here if I want to say here um, forecast Mm, I don't know, we can say forecast Tokyo, then this command is going to be sent to relay. And so this way we could, uh, anybody here who is a viewer of this channel is, is uh, technical enough to write wrapper scripts around this command so that we could do the same exact thing because relay command here is just a wrapper. Relay exec A. So you can see it's just a just a rec script so nothing forbids us from either taking this exact rec scripts or writing anything in bash so you can see here the the forecast is here for tokyo and and do relay commands for all the various relay commands we have and i'm sure somebody who is going to go and do it then finally we also have chat so how do we do chat so we do send uh, root at relay log on and those will log us on to the chat server on Relay. As you can see here, we've just been logged on. And now we can just 
Hello, anybody there? Oh, let's first log in also from here. Chat, log on. So we can see this working from two nodes. As you can see here, so the moment I did the chat log on, it says here, Moshik said Moshik has joined as the prophecy foretold. So now I can say anybody there and hello anybody. And, and so this is what we've been doing and uh, we've been chatting very, very happily with each other. So the last thing that we will do at some point is connect also the chat to normal internet so people will be able to chat from the internet without having to be on HNet. But for now, if you want to be on HNet, you just follow this video, install the binary and follow the instructions uh, from this video and you will be able and then find somebody to peer with you. As I said, I'll be happy to peer with you if you have a host that is always up. The one thing I don't like to have is machines that come up and go down all the time. But if you have a machine that is always up with a stable connection and uh, more or less fixed IP, then we can host and then you can use relay services too. And that's as simple as it is. Um, let's do a command again. Mm, there are send numbers or amicable. It finds amicable numbers. And you can see here it's already executing on relay. The amical pair is up to 20,000 R. And there's all the amical numbers up to 20,000 if you know what that is. If you want to know Mersenne numbers, uh, it will start calculating Mersenne numbers. And this is in real time, it's being calculated, it's not just a text string. So lots of interesting things. We can also do um, things like news uh, on BBC, and then you get the BBC news in real time. And um, yeah, here are the news. You can do NPR, and then we get NPR news. So just today, I have a friend in, uh, in uh, Zurich in Switzerland who just connected his machine with uh, this program. And, uh, and in about 30 minutes, we connected our machines. We started exchanging files, and he was able to use the relay services to get uh, information. And as I said, the good thing is you never leave the mainframe format. If you connect uh, mainframes to HNet, you always an EPSIDIC and the blocking factor is always retained and it's just a lot of fun to have a network besides the official internet network where like-minded people who have a passion for mainframes and have a passion for protocols and things that happen on the mainframe can connect to each other so i hope that i was able to explain how this all works i'm sure that somebody is going to go and write wrappers around the script so that it becomes very simple to send uh, commands and messages and log on to chat if you have any questions, please post them below this video. If you have any, if you have any opinion or comments about what we've done here today, I would like to hear about it. And especially, I would like to hear if you have, uh, if you like this video and press pressing the thumbs up button because that's always a great motivation for me. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.